Hello and welcome to episode 238 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 9th of February. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, a blast from the past which is also a knitting thing. I have three questions from the Ask Me Anything thread on the Ravelry group and some information on my shop update and, and of course an appearance from Jensen at the very end of the podcast wearing something that I've knitted and I'll show you that in the knitting section. So we've got a couple of make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram and I've popped links to those in the description bar down below. Um, basically we've got Craft 20 a day which is working on big projects that you can chip away at them 20 minutes a day or whatever time you can spare really. And the Craft House Magic Baby Makes 2023 make-along which is basically all the children's things that you can imagine. So come and join in with those. So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? First of all, I have a finished object to show you. And this is something that Adam's mum and I have knitted together. Um, to be honest, Liz knitted most of this, but I've done the neckband on it and sewed all the ends in and blocked it. So this is the Baby Vertebrae Cardigan by Kelly Van Nykirk. And it is so cute. It looks actually quite big now compared to what size of clothes he used to have. But it is a little bit big on him. I'll pop the footage that I've taken of him at the end of the podcast to show you how it fits. And the sleeves come a little bit long, so I do turn them up the full length of the ribbon so that they fit him. But it does mean that it'll get more wear out of it. So we've knitted the 18 to 24 months version. So Jensen is only nearly 15 months. Well, you'd expect it to be a little bit big on him. But I thought rather than knitting the one that's sort of a little bit smaller than him and only going to last a couple of months, I'd rather knit the 18 to 24 and that'll last a little bit longer. So this one says it's supposed to fit an 18 to 24 months, a uh, 50 centimetre chest. Um, but there is one larger size which says two years, which is 52.5 centimetres. So there is one size bigger than this in the pattern. So the pattern goes from a newborn to the two year size. Um, but there is actually a newborn version that is free. And I'll pop a link to that in the description bar down below, which I knitted or Liz knitted for Jensen when he was really small. And he got a lot of wear out of that. And in fact, I think he was wearing the newborn one until he was sort of four or five months old. Um, even though it looked a little bit small on him, it didn't matter too much. It kept his arms warm, even though the sleeves were a little bit on the short side. But it did last a lot longer um, than I thought it would just be in a newborn top. So I definitely recommend this. It's one of my favourite sort of baby knits. And I I'd, I'd definitely make, make this again. It's just a shame that it doesn't go bigger than sort of a two-year-old. Um... I'm sure you could sort of work it out to to come a bit bigger though but like I said that this seems quite a generous sort of size um, and I love the way this yarns come out so this colorway is called the wibbly wobbly timey wimey um, yarn and it is by Geektastic Fibres by Amanda Quaid and, and it's on the Baker's Tweed base which is 75% virgin wool 25% percent polyamide, 420 meters per 100 grams um, and that was literally, I had less than a gram left um, once I would finish doing the neckband on there. Um, so that was nice use of a 100 gram skein. Nothing was wasted really. So I'm really pleased with that, that I managed to get that out of one 100 gram skein. It says on the actual pattern that the last size, which is the 52.5 centimetres or up to two years, takes two skeins. But I don't think you'd use much of that second skein. So you might get away with like, if you could get a 20 gram mini of the same, um, the same yarn. Um, rather than buying like a whole other skein of all of course you could make matching hat etc <laughs> but that is really lovely and I'm so glad I chose this yarn to make it up in because isn't that lovely the way those colours come out really beautiful I've done a little bit of work on my twist and turns shawl this is the Stephen West mystery knit along pattern that I've been working on since October and I still haven't finished mine yet <laughs> It is a little bit sort of crunched up at the moment, but once it's blocked, that should come out really nicely. But I love this section here with the zigzags on. I have nearly finished clue two, I think. <laughs> 
there's it's quite a difference between the speed of me knitting at the moment to the, the, the speed that the clues came out but never mind but i have done one of the sections of the gorgeous cable oh look at that i love it <laughs> absolutely love that i can't wait to get this finished because this colour is just the most gorgeous thing on the planet I think. So what I need to do is do the same like this ribbing bit on this side here and then I've got to do some details inside the cables which is interesting. I don't know what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it out and see if I like the look of it and if I don't like it then I'll leave it out um, but just look at those cables oh <laughs> And then I've got another couple of sections um, down the sides here to make it a bit longer. And then there's a section at the bottom. And I said to you about this before that um, I'm not doing the full section here where there's an extra row of quite a lot of extra zigzags. I'm just doing the one by one twisted rib just to do a little bit of edging to finish it off. So it comes to about the same level um as this side piece here because i wanted it to all sort of flow rather than have a bit sticking out at the bottom but there we go that is how i've got on with my stephen west's twists and turns i do love it absolutely love it you can see i've got my cable there. i've used rather a long cable to hold my stitches um, and i've just stuck a bulb pin on the end of my cable there because I didn't have any of the um, cable stoppers to hand so I just stuck a bulb pin and Jensen's always trying to grab these especially the end that has got the little star on it's like having a little cat trying to get them <laughs> bless him so the yarn that I've used for this is the golden brown yarn set that I dyed up specially for this mystery knit along and I do have some sets on the website if you're interested in getting those I've dyed this particular set up in MCN to make it even more luxurious because I do like my squishy squishy MCN um, for knitting up the mystery knit alongs I did my last um, Stephen West's um, shawlography in the MCN as well and I just love how it's all squishy and lovely. Um, so there we go, that is make number two. So the third thing I've got to show you is one of my make nine I've started and it is a hat. You can't really see much of it to be honest. So this is the Winter Walk hat by Tracy Miller and it's Tracy from the Grocery Girls and this hat is going to be for my mum. So she's chosen this pattern. I gave her my iPad and said have a look at the patterns on Ravelry Mum and pick a hat because she wanted a nice black hat. So she picked this herself and then she said can I do it in black sparkly yarn please and I thought well I haven't got a DK in sparkle but I've managed to get a hold of some, especially for you, Mum. <laughs> I'm not quite sure whether you can really see the sparkle on camera, um, but it's certainly very sparkly here. So this is my Black Hole Sun colourway. I've now got the DK Sparkle available. I will list it on the Black Hole Sun that you can get a hold of it if you want to, but I haven't had a chance to put it on all of my yarn listings yet. But if you do want the DK Stellina base, if you just purchase the normal DK Merino base and leave a note with your order, I can just dye it up on the Stellina for you um, because I do have a couple of bags of this um, in my dyeing dungeon. So um, it is available. I just haven't got time to add it to all the listings yet. I need to go to every colourway and change the listing, which will take me quite some time but I have added it to the Black Hole Sun colourway already and the two new colourways I released last week, it's already in those as well. But I love Sparkle, so it's always good to have a DK version as well. So this pattern is really interesting in that the cast on method is a bit different from what I've used before for a hat. So in the pattern, it calls for an alternate cable cast on, which I haven't used before. And actually that's come out really nicely. So it's like a basic cable cast on, but you alternate between a sort of knit and purl way um, for doing the next stitch. I will leave a link to the video that the actual pattern links to so you can actually see what I mean. But it does seem to be a lovely pattern so far. I like the way Tracy's written it out. It's only written in one size, but you can knit it in two different yarn weights. So it's written for DK and worsted weight yarn or Aran. 
Um, so I'm interested to see how that comes up. So that's sort of flying off the needles really because I only really started, I only, only really knitted on it for a, an hour or so. And I've cast it on using a 16 inch circular needle um, with four inch tips. So I'm using an interchangeable set. To go with a 16 inch cable, you need to have the four inch shorter tips because otherwise it doesn't, it, the, the other ones are too long to be in a small circle for a hat. Um, and when you order fixed needles, anything that's 16 inches or shorter will come automatically with four inches or shorter um, tips as well. Um, I was thinking about actually in the in the near future of doing a little video about how I hire needles and which sort of length needles for what purpose and um, which sizes come in which different style of needle type and that sort of thing so that it's easier to have like a reference video. So hopefully I'll get around to that in the next couple of weeks. I've just got some um, needle stoppers on there to stop my stitches coming off the needle because when you're knitting a hat they're quite close to the end of the needle with it being a, quite a small loop um, so they're really handy and who could resist a cute little panda? <laughs> So that is on the needles and I'm hoping to get that finished over the weekend. So that is all the knitting that I have been working on this week but I do have a blast from the past. So because I've been working on my twist and turn shawl by Stephen West and doing those cables I've just thought oh I love 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 cables. I wanted to pick a project that I'd already done that was sort of very cabled which I really like. So this is a tank top I knitted at absolutely ages ago and it is called the Catronia pattern by Debbie Bliss and it was knitted from a little booklet I picked up from a knitting shop. Um, I knitted it in some Stylecroft luxury wool rich DK which is 49% acrylic and 51% wool and look at those cables how amazing. I know that there was a mistake on the back somewhere I don't know whether I can see it now but I'm looking at it much later. I know that one of the cables was incorrect. I might have fixed it, I can't remember. I did find a video tutorial that showed you how to fix cables in retrospect, which was really interesting. If I can find that as well, I'll link that in the description bar down below. Um, but how gorgeous. Um, I might have to knit one of these again and perhaps knit it in a sort of bigger size so that it didn't feel like the cables were so thick and clingy on me. I might even knit that in a cardigan actually because that would be really lovely too. Anyway, so I have popped it on so that you can see what it looks like. I think the main issue is it's having the right top to go underneath. I think I could do with like a high neck um, sort of navy blue t-shirt with long sleeves I think that would really look nice with it. I think otherwise it just doesn't look quite right with the actual top. It draws attention away from those lovely cables. Um, but I do love... I do love the look of those cables. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I'll just keep it on for the rest of the podcast. I do really like these sleeves where they're just basically knitted upwards so that they end up going over your arm rather than having like a separate sleeve. So maybe I will wear it more. I just need to make a t-shirt that goes better underneath it. So my next section is Ask Me Anything. So I've got three questions. So first of all, a question from Christina. And she was asking about how I join yarn when I've got projects where I've got a lot of ends. So um, specifically the shawlography that I showed, I think it was on last week's podcast. She was saying, how do I cope with all those ends? And do I use something like a Russian join? Now, I must admit that I am... I'm quite fussy about the way shawls look especially. Um, I know that Stephen does the weaving Stephen where he sort of weaves the, the, the ends in at the back of the work as he's working and I think it can be okay sometimes um, but I find that sometimes it looks a little bit messy as you're doing it. If you just take a bit of extra time while you're sort of working on that project to sew those ends in as you go and to sew them in nice and neatly, you can get it to look a little bit neater. 
I know that the Russian join, you're basically weaving the yarn into itself. Um, I'll leave a tutorial for that in the description bar down below if you want to see how that works. But I don't really use it that often because I feel like it doesn't take that long to sew in the ends anyway. And if you do a sort of duplicate stitch at the back of the work, you can't see it at all. And I find that that's just a little bit neater than doing the Russian join. I'm sure you can get the Russian join um, to be really neat, but I just prefer doing it so that I sew in the ends afterwards because I know that I can make sure that that extra thickness of yarn is at the back of the work isn't changing the front of the work at all. Um, I'll link it in one of the tutorials I've done where I show how I sew in my ends so that it's all nice and neat on the back of the work if you don't not know what I mean by duplicate stitching you can have a look there. I really don't mind a lot of ends at the end of a project and I do try and sew them in as I go as well so that they're not all hundreds and hundreds of ends to sew in at the end. So I hope that helps Christina. And then I had a question of Adriana. She was saying that she was excited because she's a new auntie. So congratulations, Adriana. And she was saying that she wants to knit all the baby things and that she's knitted some things in acrylic and cotton and merino blends, but she's got quite a lot of stash yarn and wants to knit things in that. She was concerned about the color bleeding into the other baby clothes and what I would recommend, whether I would recommend um, knitting things in Superwash Merino because she's had experience where she's had socks bleed after years of washing. I personally like to knit Jensen things in Merino because I don't mind hand washing. I tend to hand wash things for Jensen, I'm afraid. I don't stick them in the wash. I stick them in a bowl of Eucaland because I just find it quite easy enough to stick it in a bowl but if you're not a knitter and you're not used to hand washing, you might not be used to that sort of activity. So I think it depends on the recipient. If you're like me, <laughs> then and you're fine using Eucaland because you don't have to wash it out as well, which is also a time saver. Um, I pop some Eucaland in a bowl of water and just soak the things, unless it's got really, really dirty, where I'll just, I'll just carefully rub um, any any debris off with my hands carefully um, and then leave it soak but most of the time I can just leave it soak in a decent amount of water and eucalyptus just to get any odours out and that's absolutely fine but if you are knitting for somebody who isn't used to looking after hand knits I would probably say stick to sort of acrylic and cotton so I hope that answers your question Adriana and hopefully the recipient is into doing hand washing because you can knit up all your stash leftovers <laughs> so the last question I've got is from Joanne and she was asking about these cats up here so I'll just grab them so you can see them a bit closer so this is the first of the cats that I made and it is a large version. They are sewn from a book that I have had for absolutely ages and I think I got it second hand from somewhere. I have no idea where exactly where I got it from but it's from this book. Now you can see that I've changed the face on it quite a bit. I've just made the face up myself um, but the actual pattern for the cat is in this book along with the baby ones as well. So I made that one and these two little cuties. So they're all made in some gorgeous Tilda fabrics, uh, but again, I've changed the faces on these because I thought they were a little bit cuter. The actual book pattern looks a little bit stern with the features. I made the big one thinking that'll be a sort of decoration for my craft room. And then I made one of these thinking that I would use it as a pin cushion, but I could not bring myself to stick pins in a cute little kitty. <laughs> Um, so I just made two and has them as decorations as well. So this book is quite old. It was printed in 1999, so I don't think that they do it anymore. Um, but I did see some secondhand copies on eBay um, when I did a search. And also they had it on Amazon for like a ridiculous amount of money. Um, but if you clicked on it and then did looked at the second-hand versions there was one for about eight pound I think so there are some second-hand versions about there if you're after this book um, but there is obviously the outline patterns to do the big cat and the little cat and the design to do the face like this but um, I did change mine quite a bit if I hold it up against the screen you may well be able to take a screenshot and trace it onto some paper um, 
so that you can actually copy the face yourself if you wanted to do the same face as me. I'll show you the cat as well. They look slightly wonky to be honest, but I think they're still cute. Um, and I thought, but I did think that these looked a little bit cross kitties. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I did is I sewed my face on before I made made up the, the body and the face um, whereas they've stitched through the actual face to sort of shape it a little bit um, but there we go you can see the difference between my version and theirs and I'll give you another look of the actual cats that's the underneath bit it just lies flat on my shelf like that very very cute and if you can bring yourself to put pins in them they would be really good pin cushions as well <laughs> but they're just too cute I'll just show you the backs as well there we go so they lay on their sides very cute little gifts for cat lovers so hopefully if you are after one of those books you can get hold of it I will leave a couple of links to places where I can see it um, on like eBay and Amazon um, that hopefully you'll be able to get a copy so the next section is shop update and I just wanted to mention that my February yarn clubs will be on the website until Monday I'm gonna leave them on the website a little bit longer because I'm gonna dye them on Tuesday actually and they're gonna be shipped on Friday the 17th of February so not long now so if you purchase them this week you haven't got too long to wait till they actually get shipped you've got more options this year for the yarn clubs for the sock sets you've got a 50 gram and a 20 gram set so 70 gram sock set um, as well as the 120 gram sock set and you can also buy a 100 grams skein of either merino or mcn if you're going to be doing a shawl instead so you've got lots of options there and in terms of the mixtape minis there is a 20 gram and a 10 gram option and a number of bases there so um, lots more options this year for the yarn clubs but last of all i'm over to jensen to see you in your new cardigan so over to you jensen so jensen's got his new cardigan on and doesn't it look lovely the arms are a little bit long at the moment so i've got them folded over at the cuff um i think adam's a bit, a bit confused that he doesn't go right around his tummy but it's not meant to it's just to go around the sides and then we don't get dribble on it do we hey eh? <laughs> but it's it's come out quite nice and big really which is good because it'll last him a little bit longer and I love what the colours how the colours look like on the back well, all over it really but you can really see it on his back um, you can see Jensen's already making a tip out of our lounge with all the mega blocks but it's okay He's having fun and he's learning, aren't you, Jensen? So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you in next week's video. Bye!